Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another incredible day of C-Kids Virtual Online Hebrew School. Today, we will be learning all about our journey from slavery to freedom. And we got so much to learn, and we don't have so much time. But before we start, I want to tell you guys about three incredible competitions where you can win awesome prizes. The first is you will find on the website a daily mission to fill out all the way until Passover. Every time you fill out those missions, you will get yourselves into a raffle for some incredible, amazing prizes. Competition number two is the Great Manishtana. Now, boys and girls, what you need to do is you need to record a video of yourself saying the Manishtana and then send it in. All the information, again, is on the website. You can get your parents to help you with this. When you do this, you'll be sending in the information and the video. You'll get a chance to go into a raffle for incredible, amazing, fantastic prizes like a drone a skateboard, a gift card. It can all be won by you guys, but you got to take that video and you got to make sure that you send the video in that you can be part of the Great Manishtana. And the third competition is called See Kids Got Talent. Each grade has their own incredible competition that they got to do. Again, please look on the website under the See Kids Got Talent. You have until this Tuesday, 7 p.m., that's Tuesday, March 31st, until 7 p.m. to send in your See Kids Got Talent and the Great Manishtana program. If you do that, you have a chance to win it. So ask, after Hebrew school today, ask mom and dad to help you, send in those videos, send in those projects, and you could be a winner. Okay, I think it's time to go into class. Boys and girls, at the end of your class today, I want you to enter the answers in the form below. You will have a chance to enter in the raffle to be the winner and announce on next week's virtual Hebrew school. But at the end of class today, we will be announcing the winners of last week's competition. So make sure you stay tuned for the winners. All right, sixth and seventh graders, you guys are in for a treat today. You have the most incredible teacher Let's hear it for Rabbi Moshi. Rabbi Moshi, take it away. So this week has been pretty chill. I've been on screens all day and no one seems to care. I stay in PJs all day. And I eat what I want. There's not much structure because online school just needs to check in a few times and I'm expected to do work on my own. super late and waking up when I want to. For the first time in a long time, I'm really free. But while this has been fun, I'm actually really missing school. Seeing my friends' faces. Playing sports, even being in class. I'm not sure I can handle this freedom thing for much longer. So I'm wondering. 
Why when I have all this freedom to do what I want, I feel restless and bored? Why do I need structure? Whether we set it up ourselves or someone sets it up for us. To get things done. Okay, wow, that is an interesting question. Well, the good news is, this is a question we're going to address today. What does it really mean to be free? Go. Okay, we are ready for the third segment of the virtual online school Getting Ready for Passover. Today we got a real exciting and advanced, yep, you guys are the advanced course, an advanced segment explaining about the Seder plate and the Passover Seder. So first of all we have in front of us the general look of a Seder. We have of course the Kiddush cup, the candles, the candle for the mom lights two, daughter lights one, and of course we're going to get to the highlight of the Seder, the Seder plate. We're going to go through the items in a more detailed fashion, but first I want to go through with you the six items on the Seder plate. Some of them represent freedom and some slavery, because what's very important to understand is that tonight, the night of the Seder, we're going to focus on two themes. Two themes. It's going to be the theme of slavery and the theme of freedom. I'm going to go back and forth. Wine in general is considered freedom, like grape juice. Uh, matzah, flat, represents in general slavery. As we'll see, the maro or the bitter herbs is more slavery. We go back and forth. So on the Seder plate, we have six items. We have the shank bone, which represents God's arm reaching out to take the Jewish people out of Egypt. That is freedom. We have the... Yes? Yes, and Zalman said looks like a chauffeur. That's why Zalman's here. He is our chauffeur engineer. Right, Zalman? Yep, Paris. And then we have the egg. The egg, also, some people have it more as a um, more of a serious symbol. For us, it's a positive symbol, reminding us of the holiday sacrifice. That is a positive, that's freedom. Then we have the bitter herbs in the center. Urgh, slavery. We have the haroset. Everyone loves the haroset. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. That is a delicious mix of apples, pears, nuts, and grape juice, and some people put cinnamon in it. That, my friends, is of course, as we'll see, freedom. Then we have the karpas, which is sometimes used as an onion, or a potato, or other vegetable. That represents, of course, slavery. And finally, we have the bitter herbs again. So my friends, we'll see tonight, back and forth, the slavery and the freedom themes. And now... Every year, a group of foods gather on the Seder table to commemorate the freedom of the Jewish people from slavery. This year, three of those items will compete against each other in what can only be described as a glorified popularity contest. I'm Matzah, and um, I think my greatest strength is probably my humility. I know it doesn't sound very humble of me to say that about myself, but uh, I mean, I don't think I could be arrogant if I tried. Uh, look at me, I'm, I'm barely three-dimensional. I'm the bitter herb, and I am bitter. I'm a horseradish, and I'm bitter about oppression, and I'm a bitter about slavery, and I'm also still extremely bitter about some childhood baggage, uh, but mostly the oppression thing. Hey, we're the four cups of wine. Woo! We stand for freedom, freedom! freedom! and liberty. Woo! Liberty! I'm bitter that my teachers insisted on uh, fitting me into a mold rather than fostering my talents. I guess, though, since my main talent is being bitter, they did kind of foster that. So, uh, good for you. I'm still bitter. I had a short childhood, um, shorter than most, I think, um, under 18 minutes, to be precise. And then I just had to grow up quick. I was hardened, I think, by the, by the harsh realities of the world and then by the matzah. We represent freedom, and as our first act as representatives of freedom at the Seder table, we are going to tell you to take it easy. When you drink each one of us, we want you to lean back and enjoy the freedom. Woo! Uh, 
just to clarify, uh, you're supposed to lean to the left, not straight back. Woo! I work hard not to leaven. I'm what's called a shmura matzah, which means my entire development has been carefully guarded uh, from the very beginning um, to make sure no possible unwanted contact with water and subsequent leavening could ever occur. Uh, I also do sit-ups. I know matzah has this kind of uh, celebrity status, the instant recognition, but when I'm out there on the Seder plate, I get results. I get real reactions. Uh, I often make people cry. Does matzah do that? No. As I mentioned before, I think my real strength is my humility. I hope in that sense I can really help people experience Passover by inspiring them to search within themselves and find the humility necessary to become truly free. Of course, I try to use my bitterness as a constructive force to be aware of the hardships of the past and uh, the mistakes I've made so I can push forward and uh, make things better for the future. So I can be a, a better herb. You see what I did there? Why aren't you laughing? That makes me bitter. I think I help people internalize the Passover experience. Also, on a more literal level, um, I actually get internalized by being eaten. We've been training for this all year. All right, boys. One, two, three. Lean. Good form, boys. We're going to win this day. Woo! Woo! This Passover, your Seder will be the playing field. Which of these foodstuffs will inspire you the most and be crowned the Seder Plate Champion? So my friends, here we are, ready to go and make some actual haroset. This is delicious, it's sweet, and it is the cream on the moror. Yes, you know we have the moror, the bitter herb, and we dip it in the haroset? How is that stuff made? Check out the screen and watch. You take some pear, you take some apple, you take some walnut, and you take, of course, some wine or grape juice, and we're gonna peel the apples, cut up the apples on the pear, mash in and crush the walnuts, Mix it together, and you get a beautiful, delicious texture of the yummy harosha. Don't forget, of course, the wine the grape juice. Now we'll add that to our Seder plate. And now our Seder plate is complete. Let's look what we have here. We have the egg, we have the potato, we have the maro, or this is romaine lettuce, we have the harosha, and the shank bone. My friends, the actual Seder plate is ready to go. So, as mentioned earlier, the Seder has the two themes, the slavery and the freedom. We're going to see that in the next part of the Seder. You see, one of the main famous parts of the Seder, as you know, is the asking the four questions. The four questions, everyone knows. You know that type of thing? So, we have four questions. Two of the questions focus on things of sadness, things of slavery. Why do we have the... Um, bitter herbs. Why do we have the matzah? Two of them have to do with freedom. Why do we lean? Why do we dip twice? In other words, we have within the Manishtana the themes of slavery and the themes of freedom. But I'll tell you something else, and this is something if you think about it, many people might not think about this. You know how every year we ask the four questions? Do you ever wonder what the answer? Everyone asks, Father, I want to ask you four questions. Why is this night different from all other nights? Is there an answer or just part of the program? What many people don't realize is the answer actually is the next paragraph. We say, we were slaves in Egypt. Avadim hayinu We were slaves in Egypt and God took us out to make us free. That paragraph too focuses on slavery and focuses on freedom. Going back for a moment, when we made that haroset, you know what the haroset is used for? We take the bitter herbs. The bitter herbs is meant to be the bitterness of the slavery. Yet we dip it into the sweet, delicious haroset, showing the softening and not just being stuck in the slavery, but also the freedom. So as we're going to see in a few moments, there's a tremendous, beautiful lesson that can be learned from these two themes in the course of the Passover Seder. By the way, it's great to see all you guys watching. You guys are looking pretty good today. Okay, let's see if you can spot the themes of freedom and slavery in the following images and text. Go! Looks like an Egyptian taskmaster forcing a Jewish slave to work hard. Slavery or freedom? Okay, that was easy. How about the next one? 
And Hashem said to Avram, You should surely know that your seed will be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they will enslave them and afflict them four hundred years. These are God's words to Avraham, telling him that the Jewish people will go down to Egypt. What do you think? Slavery or freedom? You are right. That was slavery too. How about the next one? At the Seder, we lean to the left and recline while we drink our wine or grape juice. Leaning, relaxing, hmm, what do you think? You guessed it, freedom. The next one is a quote of a popular verse. In each and every generation, a person is obligated to see himself as if he left Egypt. As it is stated, Exodus 13, 18. For the sake of this, did the Lord do this for me in my going out of Egypt? What do you think? Slavery or freedom? Yup, freedom it is. And the last one is a picture of Moshe leading the Jewish people through the sea. Yes, you got it, it's freedom as well. As you can see, the Haggadah's narrative through the night will take us back and forth between the two ideas. Now let's learn from Rabbi Moshe a deeper and more personal understanding of what this means to us today. I think I will get the answer to my question at the start of this class today. Does being free really mean freedom from structure and rules? Let's find out. So we have all these items, slavery, freedom. Let me ask you a question. And the question is, what does it mean, freedom? Does freedom mean no rules, completely free from anything that guides us or restricts us? Or does freedom mean rules? I mean, what does freedom mean anyway? If you think about it, God took us out of Egypt from one cruel master called Pharaoh, but then he took us to Sinai, where we got another master, albeit a wonderful, great master, the Torah. But the Torah gave us many rules too. See, there's a misconception that people think that rules are limiting. I want to tell you something. I sometimes go to the store and buy from Ikea an item, a bookcase, a table. The greatest gift of freedom they give me is the instructions how to put it together. If I didn't have instructions how to put it together, I'd be at loss. I'd be sitting there scratching my head with a bunch of screws and plugs. I have no idea what to do with it. You need to have, you know, let me, let me give you an example. Some of you guys love sports. Let me tell you something. One of the big universal sports, soccer. Personally, I'm a football fan. But soccer, everyone knows. But to play a game of soccer, you have to have rules. If you were to rules, the game is not fun and not enjoyable and goes lower. In other words, it's only the rules that give us the freedom to succeed and go where we have to go. When God took us out of Egypt, He didn't want us to be lost in a desert without guidance. He wanted to give us structure and the freedom to grow and to be who we could become. And that is the true definition of freedom. Having the opportunity to become who you really are. Set yourself free. Nothing should hold you back. But we need the tools to do it. And that is what the night is all about. The Seder is all about the balance of releasing ourselves from the limits and the things that hold us back, but within the structure, within the framework of a divinely, that means from God, given Torah. And now we are ready for a whole nother level of excitement. We are not going to just discuss this on a regular level. We're going to go deep, deep, deep inside. Inside of every single person, every single Jewish person has a godly soul that desires and wishes to do what God wants. But we also have another voice inside of us, the animal soul. Sort of a little mini pharaoh that says, take care of me. Me, 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 pick me. That little sound, a little voice inside of us that wants to put ourselves before others. What we want before what we need. What we'd like to have before what's important. And that mini pharaoh seeks to control us. Tonight, the night of the Seder. Now I keep saying tonight because we're talking about the Seder, but of course you're watching this now on Sunday morning. But on the night of the Seder, we're celebrating getting free, not just from the world around us and the limitations around us, but the little guy inside of us that sometimes holds us back from doing the right thing, sometimes limits us. It's time to go free. Passover is a time to pass over, to get past the things that hold us back from becoming the real you. There's a mini fire inside of you, and I want to tell you something. There's a little Moses inside everybody too. Everybody's got a little bit of Moses in them. And Moses is that part of you that takes you out of Egypt. And takes you to a place where Pharaoh could no longer touch you. It actually reminds me of a song. 
There's a little bit of Moses in me. I can't carry a tune, but watch these guys, they can. of the Seder, but the more advanced level discussing freedom and slavery and how it applies to us today in the world that we live in. Sometimes we feel restricted by the things going on around us. We have a chance to go free. But now, I got a special treat for you. We're going over to Rabbi Beryl for some really awesome games. Check this out. 
Thank you, Rabbi Moishi. We're moving on to today's game show. Guys, get ready with a pen and a paper so you can take down your score. Moving on to our first round while you get your pen and paper, Zoom. It's not the type of Zoom that you have online classes on, but this one goes as follows. An item will come on the board, super zoomed in, you won't see the whole picture, and you have to guess which Passover related-ish item it is. Moving on to our first item, get that pen and paper ready, and it is, what is that? If you know it, say it out loud, it's 10 points, say it out loud if you know it, and of course, we'll move it back just a little bit, you can still get your points, and it is. If you said maror or horseradish, give yourself 10 points if you got it at the beginning, if you wait until I zoomed out, you get only 5 points, and moving on to our next one, and this is, now it's not matzah. If you said matzah, it's not correct. Try again for 10 points. Okay, for five, we'll move out a little bit. Not matzah. And we'll show it to you, it is a matzah pillow. Many people use a pillow at the Seder when we lean, showing that we're free. They like to use a pillow to feel really comfy, like the old fashioned princesses or princes. If you said a matzah pillow, you get 10 points, or five if you said it at the second round. And we're moving on to our next item, and it is a tough one. 10 points if you know it now. Say it out loud if you know it. Super hard. What is that? Okay, we'll zoom out a little for five points. And it is, of course, a carton of eggs. If you got it the first time, 10, later five. Moving on to our next one. We have an egg on the Seder plate. If you said eggs, you get your points. And moving on to, for 10 points. You sure will get this one, but we'll zoom out a little for five. And of course it is the four cups of wine. If you said wine or four cups of wine or grape juice, you get yourself the 10 or the five points. Moving on to our next item. Tuffy. <laughs> what is that? Okay, we'll zoom out for you here. I know that's a hard one. And of course it is a cement mixing truck. We eat the haroset on the Seder plate, which is a mix of fruit and nuts that look similar to the cement that they used while building those big pyramids for Pharaoh. If you got that correct, you're amazing. Give yourself 10 or actually 20 points we got for that one. 20 points if you got it at the beginning, 10 points if you got it after I zoomed out that little bit. And moving on to our next item, and it is, it's our final item of Zoom. Say it out loud if you know it. Okay, we'll zoom out a little for five points. Okay, and we're giving it to you here. If you know it, you have to say it out loud or else you have no chance now. Stop there. And it is, of course, a crown. When we act like the ultimate freedom, the ultimate opposite of slaves like we were in Egypt, at the center we act completely free like kings or princesses or princes. And when we're, it's like a crown. That's what the crown is for. If you move on, and if you got it right, give yourself 10 points. And we're moving on to our next round of Seder Play Boss. During this round, you should become the total boss of the Seder Plate. We're gonna quickly go through, if you know that your Seder Plate items, you're about to be tested here. We're gonna quickly go through those items to get you ready for this coming challenge. And of course, on our Seder plate, we've got six very specific things. Each one has tons of meaning, and that's why we're very specific what we put on that Seder plate. Many, many, many years of tradition, of lots of meaning in these six items. And let's see what they are. The first one is, of course, the Zoroa, the shank bone or the bone on the Seder plate. The next one is the Beitza or the egg on the Seder plate. And then right in the middle is the Maror, those bitter herbs, the horseradish. And then, of course, the charotza, that mix of fruits and nuts to make it look like the mortar that the Jewish people or the cement that we used in Egypt. And then finally, on the far, is the karpas. It's a vegetable people use parsley, onion, potato, and dipping in salt water during the Seder. And then finally, the chazeret. People use romaine lettuce for the chazeret. That's at the very bottom there. And now, we will test your knowledge. Of course, before we do, we're going to get rid of that cheating back Seder plate there, so you won't have it. Now for the first round, we're keeping it super simple, it's just 10 points here. We're gonna have you close your eyes when I say go. Listen out for that interesting sound. When you hear it, you open your eyes and quickly tell me what is missing on the plate. At the beginning, we'll keep it quite simple. I'm taking away just one thing. So take in that plate, take it in, take in the six items. Focus carefully. 
And here we are. Close those eyes. Listen out for the sound. Open your eyes. What is missing on that Seder plate? Scream it out loud if you know it. And of course it is the Charoset. It's that mix of fruits and nuts. If you said that, give yourself 10 points. Close those eyes for our next one. We're taking away something else. Close those eyes. Listen out for the sound. Eyes closed. All right, open your eyes. What's missing? Call it out loud if you know it. Call it out loud, say what it is. And of course it is the Chazeret, that romaine lettuce if you knew it. 10 points for you. Close those eyes, our final chance. Listen out for the sound. What's missing? What is missing here? What was there? It was the shank bone or the Zoroa, that bone. If you said bone or any type of bone, you give yourself 10 points for that. And we're moving on to, now it gets hard. If you thought that was hard, this is hard. Watch carefully. The way this game is gonna work is, we'll show you the whole Seder plate. You can keep your eyes open for this one. I'm gonna scramble the items, remove just one of them. Give you 10 seconds to figure out which item was removed. Keep your eyes open for this one. Get ready, this is 20 points. Call it out as soon as you know what it is, but you can only call out one thing. If you call out something, that's it, that's your turn. All right, here we go. And for the first one, it is. 10 seconds. What's missing? Say it out loud. As soon as that buzzer goes off, no more chance to say it. What's missing? Okay, you can't say it anymore, and of course what missing was missing was, was the charoset, that mix again of the fruits and the nuts. It was missing on our Seder plate. If you said it, you get 20 points. We're moving on to our next one again for 20 points. Watch carefully. 10 seconds. Say it out loud if you know it. You got 10 seconds. Call it up before the buzzer. Say it out loud. And of course, what was missing was the carpas. That we dip in the salt water. If you knew it, you get yourself your 20 points. If not, wait for our next one, and it is 10 seconds. What's missing? Tricky one here. Call it out before the buzzer. Buzzer! All right, what was it? You can't say it now, and of course, it was the maror, those bitter herbs. If you said it, you get your 20 points. Moving on to our next one, and it is. Step it up. Now with this, on this round, I'm gonna actually show you the entire Seder plate, but I'm giving the items numbers. This is actually, according to many customs, the, ar the order which you set your Seder plate up in. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna remove all the items of the Seder plate, and this will be for 30 points. I'm gonna ask you, and give you 10 seconds to tell me which one it is. I'm gonna ask you one of the items, you'll tell me where it goes. We're starting, of course, with, call it out as soon as you know it. Say that number, call out the number. I'll just give you a few seconds, actually, to tell me the answer. And we're gonna start with the romaine lettuce. Okay, I think I gave that one away, so no one gets the 30 points for this one. We're moving on to the carpas. This celery, where does it go? Call it that number. Okay, hold it, if you didn't say it right, whatever, hold that number, and it's number five. Hold, moving on to the maror. Where is the maror, where does it go? Call it the number. And it is number three. That was only 20 points, don't give yourself 30 points for that one, now they're 20 points. Where is the shank bone go? That bone, where does it go? Number one, of course, you get 20 points, and now for only 10 points, where is the charoset go? That mix of fruits and nuts. And of course, it is number four. And for the egg, you don't get any points. And it's at number two. This is our Seder Plate, and you are the official Seder Plate boss. Moving on to our final round of trivia. Here is some passive questions for you. Let's see if you get them right. The question will come up with four possible answers. You gotta call out what the answer is before the answer comes up. And here we go, and the first Question is worth just 10 points. Should be quite simple for you. And the question is, at the Seder, we drink four cups of what? Is it steaming hot cocoa? Is it Coke? Delicious, coach for Passover, of course. Is it olive oil? Or is it grape juice or wine? 
Which one of those four items is it? And of course the answer is, for 10 points, grape juice or wine. We drink four cups of grape juice or wine at the Seder. It's a special mitzvah. Moving on to our next question, it is, for 20 points, what do we do at the Seder while drinking the grape juice and eating the matzah? What do we do? And the answer is either we lean, or we sing die, die, yay, no, whoo, or we close our eyes, or of course, we search secretly for the afikom. Say what it is before I pull it out, and the answer is, of course, that we lean. That's a 20-point question. If you got that right, give yourself 20 points. Moving on to our next question, it is a 20-point question as well. Why, just why, do we lean at the Seder? Do you know why? Here we go, the answer is either it's a sign of freedom as we lean, or it's good for digestion. Or as we lean on our fellow, it brings unity together. Or finally, Batya leaned over the Nile River to take baby Moshe out of the river. Say what it is if you know it, and the answer is of course for 20 points, it's a sign of freedom. We lean over like kings and queens, during our Seder, moving on to our next question, and it's a 30-point question. That means it's getting challenging here. And the question is, what is matzah called? Now, you didn't learn that today, but you may know that, or you may be able to guess. And the answers are, either it's called the bread of faith. It's called king crunch. It is called the bread of teeth. Or it's called the bread of healing. Which one? Bread of faith, king, crunch, bread of the teeth, or bread of healing? And the answer is, say it out loud if you know it, 30 points, and it is both the bread of faith and the bread of healing, and it's a blessing for faith and for healing, specialty lots of that shmura matzah on the night of the Seder. If you said either one of those, give yourself 30 points, if you said both together, we're giving you 60 points for this one. Moving on to our next one, and it is, 20 points. During which season does Pesach always come around? Again, you didn't learn it today. You may be able to guess it. And here it goes. Either during fall, during the summer, during the spring, or it depends on the year, different seasons every year. Which one is it called out? And the answer is always during the spring. It says clearly in the Torah, the Passover has to be during the spring. And that's all for today's game show. And here we go. How did you score? Count up that score of yours. You have some fives in there too, tens, twenties, three, put them together. It's not a math quiz now, but you gotta put your points together to get that right. We'll give you a moment to put that together there. Okay, you got your number there, and here we'll see where you ranked. And of course, if you got between a 30 and a 90, you're a beginner. You've got lots to learn. If you got between 100 and 230, that's a huge amount. You're intermediate. Those were very, very challenging questions and challenging challenges. If you got that, you're amazing. And of course, if you got between 240 and 360, you are a pro. Thank you for joining me today for the virtual Chabad Hebrew School game show. Moving on to more mushki. So long. You. Hi, I'm Mushki, and I am so excited to share with you today a really cool origami paper craft. I know you've been learning today all about the deeper meaning of freedom and slavery, and here is a perfect craft that shows you trapped, free, trapped, free. Instead of calling it a finger trap, we can call it a freedom trap. Blah. Let's start. All you will need for this activity is two different colors of paper. If you only have white paper at home, no worries, I just colored it in. A ruler, a thick marker, not one that goes out, one that's nice in a straight cylinder, glue gun or tape, scissors, and a pen. So, you are going to need four different thin strips of paper measuring one centimeter long, two of each color. So I'm going to start my ruler, measuring one centimeter. It's a tiny drop more than one centimeter, that's okay. And I'm going to cut that up. So here I have four different strips of 
paper. Now I am going to form a V. So I can either tape the corners or I'm gonna put a tiny drop of glue. If this is a little intimidating for you and you feel like, oh, I'm really not so good at origami, no worries, you can watch this video as many times as you need. I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of tape or glue gun to the edge of the marker, just a tiny drop that it will come off. Now I'm going to popping up a little bit. The dark blue is going to be on top on this side. I'm going to flip it over. Add a little bit more. It doesn't seem to be sticking. And on the other side, it's going to be the opposite. If there's light blue on this side, there's going to be dark blue on the top. just, or not just, similar to weaving a basket. You're first going to choose, if I'm going to start with my light blue, I'm gonna first put light blue over dark blue on this side, light blue over dark blue on this side. Now, once I do that, I go to the opposite. Now, I'm going to be putting the dark blue over the light blue, so dark blue, blue and dark blue over light blue and tighten it up as you go. Now I'm going to be putting the light blue over the dark blue. And now on this side, light blue over the dark blue. Dark blue, over the light blue, dark blue, over the light blue. The farther you go, the pattern starts becoming more apparent. is the time to truly, truly be free. 
Enjoy this with your family and have a wonderful, wonderful Pesach. And now, over to Rabbi Beryl for some amazing review questions. Thank you, Rabbi Beryl. That was so much fun. I'm Mushki from Honor Roll Crafts, and I'm so excited to do with you today a special origami craft that has to do with the Jews leaving Egypt and the 10 plagues, you guessed it, special frogs, and they actually jump. How cool. All you will need for this activity is a square paper six inches by six inches. You're going to start by folding the paper over in half. If origami is a little intimidating for you, do not worry. The cool part about a video is you can stop and rewind it at any time. Now I'm going to fold it over. Gonna make it look a little bit like a house now. By every fold, make sure you press it down really well. Now we're going to make the frog's hands. Now we're gonna shorten the house. And then we're going to fold the two sides in. Pick up the hands a little bit. Make the house a little thinner. Bring the bottom up again. Now this next part is probably the most confusing part. You're going to open it up a little bit. Make it look a little bit like a ship at the bottom. Get the edges even, look like a boat. Create some legs. Fold up the feet. Like that. Press it down well. It's almost ready, but you want it to have that jumping factor. So you're going to press it back over. Bring the legs down. Little hands, little feet. Get ready to turn it over. I am excited to add my adorable little googly eyes. And now I can add my newest addition frog to its tribe frog friends. Oops. There we go. Enjoy. All right, boys and girls, it's the time you've all been waiting for. Let's find out who our winners from last week's competition is. We got our hat over here. We gotta do a big, big mix up over here. There were over 35,000 kids that entered the competition this week. Can you believe that? All right, here we go. Let's see what we got over here. And our first winner is Caleb Cooperstein from Howard County, Maryland. Well done, Caleb. You are our first winner for this week. 
Our second winner is we gotta go deep in here all the way down to the bottom. Let's get another piece. Our second winner is Bella Halal from Melville, New York. Well done, Bella, good job. And let's get our third winner. Our third winner, who could it be? Let's find out, is none other than Hannah Kibakov from Highland Park, Illinois. Well done, Hannah. And welcome to all our winners, Muzzle Top. See kids, we'll contact you and you have won yourself a gift certificate. All right, boys and girls. Now I have a very special announcement to make for all of you, so listen up. Moms and dads, boys and girls, this year, you might have been learning, or other kids in your Hebrew school might have been learning the incredible JUQ competition. And today, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, you are going to have a chance to watch and find out who the winners from the entire world are. So make sure you'll see on the screen below me, Chabad.org, that's www.chabad.org forward slash JUQ at 3 p.m. log on live to find out who the winners. Get some popcorn, get comfy, and enjoy the show. From all of us here at the Sea Kids Virtual Online Hebrew School, we wish you a good week, stay healthy, shalom.